I worked for the First National Bank. I'd started as a bookkeeper and worked my way up. I hadn't accumulated a great deal at the time of the panic, but I had some savings. I had a good job. <laughs> that was the trouble. My savings and my job disappeared at much the same time. In the early 1930s, the United States experienced the worst depression in her history, an economic slump which turned on its head the prosperity of the 1920s, a slump in which 15 million Americans lost their jobs. But what was it like to live through this Great Depression? This program reconstructs the testimonies of four Americans who experienced those hard times. Their words survive because at the end of the decade, they were each interviewed by the Federal Writers Project, an oral history project paid for by the US government. 10,000 Americans were interviewed in all, their lives, their experiences written down filed away in the Library of Congress. 10,000 American voices. This is Wall Street, in the heart of New York's financial district. This is where the Great Depression began. In the good times, in the 1920s, the stock exchange had marked the beating pulse of American capitalism. Confidence reflected in soaring share prices, investors buying stock, banking on future prosperity. People thought the boom times were here to stay. The president, Herbert Hoover, spoke of an end to poverty, of unlimited plenty for all. But then, October 25th, 1929, the bubble of confidence burst. Stock traders watched in horror as prices began to drop and then plunge into free fall. Fortunes evaporated overnight, $30 billion blown away in just a few weeks. The shock waves of the Wall Street crash were felt across the country. Small banks found themselves besieged by anxious investors, desperate to withdraw their savings before they lost it all. Raymond Tarver was a bank clerk. He described to the Federal Writers Project the collapse of one small town bank. We were having breakfast one morning, my wife Louise and I, when the telephone rang. It was one of the fellows that I worked with. He said, Tarver, have you heard the news? I said, what news? What's it all about? Well, he said, hurry on down and see. And sure enough, in front of the bank, there stood a crowd of employees. The bank was closed, and there was a notice to that effect on the door. I had all my savings in that bank. My job hung in the balance. Even so, at first, I wasn't so worried about my losses. I was more concerned about our customers. The saddest part was to see the widows, who'd probably been left just a little insurance. They'd put it in the bank. I mean, what were they going to live off now? Herbert Hoover, meanwhile, faced the crisis with an optimistic smile. He said there'd been recessions before. He tried to persuade America the economy was fundamentally sound, that recovery was just around the corner. But the economy depended on people buying things, and with confidence shot to pieces, people held on to their money. They stopped spending. The economy just ground to a halt. <laughs> 